This weekend, we welcome back to the show Claudio Gross, the Managing Director of Global Gold in Switzerland, to discuss Sunday's historic gold referendum vote from his insider's perspective. This referendum would require the Swiss National Bank to stop selling gold reserves to keep its gold in Switzerland and to maintain 20% of its total assets in gold. What might the growing gold repatriation movement mean for the ECB and the Fed? Is hostility against Swiss neutrality, Swiss wealth, and Swiss identity the unspoken motivation behind EU and US attempts to control this country of only 8 million people? And why do financial elites hate the idea of a strong Swiss franc? Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Mises Weekends. And as promised, this weekend we're joined once again by our friend in Switzerland, Claudio Gross, on the eve of Sunday's Swiss gold referendum. Claudio, how are you today? Fine. Thank you very much, Jeff. Glad to uh, speak to you again. Well, we spoke to you most recently in October, and I'd like to know, has anything uh, fundamentally changed since then? And do you have any predictions for Sunday's vote? Well, fundamentally changed, you know, and I remember we had the first, I mean, we had the call, I think, on the 10th of October. And at, at that time, we basically were saying, you know, that it's, there is no debate taking place, that, you know, the establishment basically is trying to keep the whole topic uh, as quiet as possible. So no TV shows, no debates were, were planned. And uh, what we then uh, experienced, uh, basically, at the end of October, the first poll came out, uh, you know, amongst uh, 14,000 people. And for for a surprise, 44% of all the, the people were pro gold initiative and only 39 against it. And then basically, you know, everything started. Uh, you know, then we had the TV debate taking place beginning of November, the 7th of November uh, on the Swiss TV, which is the biggest uh, political arena uh, show. I mean, it's, it's typical politicians uh, fighting in any kind of arena. And... Um, so we had that one, and and then basically since then we just have faced you know a huge, an enormous anti-gold propaganda campaign by all members of the of the Swiss establishment. And I think you know I haven't seen. I mean, okay, I'm now 43 years old, but I haven't seen or realized that we ever had such a campaign uh, in the past. You know, by all the political parties, of course. You know that you had even you know the national ba national bank. Uh, the, the president was all over the place. That never happened before. Uh, you know, then we had the mass medias, basically all the print medias completely against it, uh, saying, you know, that these uh, gold guys are completely crazy and right wing and isolationists and uh, old fashioned and, of course, dumb. They don't understand the economy. And um, so, I mean, that's that's what happened in the past. And now we had the last poll uh, coming out uh, 20th of November, uh, basically, you know, a poll sponsored by um, the, uh, the, the national TV station in cooperation with uh, the company is called GFS. Uh, and so this polling agency mainly is, I mean, they only work for, for the government. Uh, you know, they're their burn office and, you know, they have also Zurich office, but they basically only have big banks and uh, big insurance companies and as well, you know, NGOs. So, I mean, I don't know how neutral they are, uh, but they came up, you know, with another poll amongst 1,200 uh, people. And then basically 38% were only pro-gold and 47 against, so it, the picture has changed. And, uh, and that's where we are today. Claudio, do Swiss citizens living outside of Switzerland get to vote, and do non-citizens who are residents of Switzerland get to vote? Yeah, I think both is possible. I mean, uh, you know, Swiss citizens which are outside of, uh, of Switzerland, they basically can vote at the embassy. And uh, so, so, yeah, that's not a problem. And if the referendum passes, the national referendum, do the individual cantons have to pass it as well? That's correct. I mean, you know, because it's basically we're talking about the constitutional change. So there you need you need more than 50 percent of all, you know, of the of the uh, inhabitants of Switzerland, which are allowed to vote. So you need to have a majority there. But you also need a majority amongst the, the cantons, uh, so you know, that you have, let's say, uh, you know, uh, we have 26 cantons, so basically you need at least uh, 14 pro-gold initiative so that it goes through. But you don't need 100% of the cantons to pass it, only a majority. Only a majority, yeah. Now, you mentioned that the Swiss establishment has come out firmly against this referendum. Are there international elements of that as well? In other words, are central bankers 
at the ECB and the US Fed, our investment houses like Goldman Sachs, our Western politicians outside of Switzerland uh, speaking up against the referendum? I was really focusing especially on the Swiss media. So, and uh, I mean, there we had enough propaganda because everyone was against uh, the Gold Initiative. Uh, I haven't seen that much, again, you know, uh, negative uh, argumentations from uh, other international uh, institutions. I mean, we had some uh, uh, international uh, players which are in favor of gold. So they were basically, you know, uh, coming up with some uh, uh, support uh, when it comes to that. But I mean, you know, I think quite small. I mean, really, the because you know the Swiss people. Um, you know, we had we had one guy basically asking also for some financial support from abroad, and I think maybe he got it. You know, a few thousand. I mean, I would say twenty, thirty thousand Swiss francs, and that has now been used. You know, as as an argument against uh, the gold initiative, saying that uh, yeah, these gold uh, speculants are basically supporting you know the initiative on the back of of the Swiss people which is absolutely, I mean, nonsense, uh, because really it hardly has uh, any impact. Well, in the U.S. media, this vote has not received nearly as much attention as the Scottish independence vote did a few months back. But let's talk about the actual requirements of the referendum. The 20 percent reserve rule does not seem radical when you look at the Swiss National Bank historically. In other words, for many, many decades, The bank held about 40% gold reserves. And really, even as recently as 2008, it held 20% gold reserves. So I think the notion that this is seen as an attack on Swiss central bankers or a radical measure of reform is wrong. I like your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I also I don't see any any problem with the 20%. I mean, you know, the biggest argument basically has been that... uh, uh, that uh, the SMB is not allowed to sell in uh, any any gold reserves in the future. So you know a lot of people who basically don't understand that uh, gold is money and that also gold is the superior currency, even as per uh, Alan Greenspan, who basically had a discussion. I don't know if you have seen it, eighteenth uh, eighteenth yes. of uh, October at the Council of Foreign Relations. Uh, I mean. So, I mean, he was talking about gold. He was talking about why central banks held gold uh, because he was uh, saying, you know, we, we we don't get out of the actual uh, crisis uh, with another crisis. Because he was talking about turmoil. And in this regards, he also came up saying yeah, that gold is, 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 is a very good investment. And, uh, and though he also explained why central banks basically held physical gold as, a, as an insurance against, you know, the, 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 especially the U.S. dollars and the whole fiat money system. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, they they basically just saw, okay, gold as, as a reserve, you know, and we buy it as an insurance. But in a crisis scenario, if they don't understand, you know, how, how the, the paper money system came into existence, and if they don't understand that at the end of the day, I, I mean, you know, it, gold has been money for 3,000 years. And I'm sure because of that, it will stay another few thousand years and all the paper currencies basically have gone. So they don't understand that when we buy physical gold, that we basically back up, you know, the Swiss franc. And <clears throat> the more gold uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, the, the stronger the Swiss franc gets, uh, even, you know, if the crisis is going to accelerate in the future. And, uh, as, uh, and then it doesn't make sense, you know, that you would sell your physical gold but at the same time, you basically will back up your, your papers with Frank, you know, by gold. And so it will, uh, in my point of view, uh, have a much higher acceptance as a, as a medium of exchange than also in the future. Well, since 2011, the Swiss franc has effectively been pegged to the euro at a ratio of 120 to 1. Now, did the Swiss National Bank adopt this peg unilaterally? Was this done uh, solely by the central bank and not legislatively? Uh, yeah. Um, I. To be honest, that's uh, a good question. I think they never, uh, you know, because, I mean, the SMB, I mean, the central banks are independent. That's what they are telling us all the time. I mean, uh, okay, I mean, even, <laughs> okay, Greenspan again, he gave a speech in uh, in New Orleans at the conference, and then he was also asked how independent, you know, the Federal Reserve is, and he was like, you know, we are not that much independent. So, in, uh, I mean, that's most likely we also see that, um, you know, just when we see that, the banking system, the politicians, uh, the government, the bureaucrats, uh, mass media, I mean, everyone is supporting the SMB. So I don't know how, you know, how independent they are when they have basically the whole establishment backing them up. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I think it has been um, 
an unilateral decision by the SMB to peg to 120, and most likely they got in advance, you know, some support from uh, from the council. But I, I'm not sure if there was an official uh, vote uh, taking place because that would be basically against this kind of picture that the national bank is always independent. Would a yes vote on Sunday's referendum mean an end to the peg? In other words, at least in the short term, it appears the Swiss National Bank would have to sell euros or buy gold. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, whatever happens on Sunday, I mean, the SMB still is in the lead. So what they basically could do, I mean, they can also print uh, Swiss francs and buy gold uh, instead. Uh, no, and not selling, you know, euro assets, for example. Uh, so, I mean, that would lead to the fact that they could also inflate the Swiss franc and um and then, uh, uh, you know, they might, you know, I, I believe they can keep the pack up anyway. You know, I, as far as I know, I mean, you know, I think 10 days ago, 14 days ago, the Swiss franc came very close to this 120. And uh, I mean, the National Bank is never communicating uh, anything what they are doing, um, but uh, at least, you know, of their of their actions. Uh, but uh, there has been, you know, strong voices and also reliable sources in the market saying that they purchased another 500 million of, of euros just to keep, uh, you know, to push the Swiss franc up. Um, so, you know, in the long run, I, I mean, even if we don't have, if we have we're down to 7.8%, I mean, a lot of people still trust the Swiss franc. Um, also, we have, you know, the highest balance sheet uh, of central banks uh, in, in, in comparison with, you know, for example, the GDP. I think there we are number one. So there is a lot of, of, of paper money uh, risk uh, in, in, in the Swiss franc. Um, but a lot of people still, you know, trust in the, in the Swiss franc. And we still have an economy that is, you know, working uh, fine. We still have this uh, political stability, you know, direct democracy. Uh, so uh, I think it will be hard anyway, especially now when Draghi, I mean, Draghi is trying really everything, you know, to inflate the euro. Uh, so, I mean, if this and this, uh, most likely he will succeed one fine day if he brings it out, out of, the, uh, of the, the banking system into real, you know, uh, circulation. Um, I think then it will be hard anyway to keep that peg, uh, you know, even midterm. Well, Peter Schiff describes the peg as the de facto adoption of the euro by the SNB. And with that comes, of course, an importation in effect of ECB inflation. Claudia, do you think average Swiss understand that the SNB policy of weakening the franc hurts them? First of all, you know, Schiff, I mean, I fully agree with him. Uh, secondly, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of Swiss people realize uh, that, uh, you know, that that the money is losing uh, purchasing power. And they even now realize uh, that, you know, it's it's a, it's an ongoing redistribution. Um, so uh, they, they, you know, most of them. And the funny stuff is basically, I mean, you know, also when you look at who is pro gold and who is against gold. So the more you go lower in in the in the hierarchy of of the society, and you're getting closer to the average Swiss worker. I mean, they are pro gold. And the higher you go up into the hierarchy, you know, more more towers, you know, the, the today's elite, uh, the more they are against gold. Um, so I mean, you know, the normal people they realize that they are not better off, and they also realize that hey, rentals are going. More rentals uh, for for mortgages, uh, not mortgages, to rent an apartment. These prices are increasing. Uh, you know, especially healthcare uh, stuff uh, and insurances are increasing tremendously. And they even see that we have you know higher uh, food prices, for example. Uh, so they you know. They don't buy, at least, you know, the official uh, data from from the SMB, which is saying, you know, we have zero uh, uh, percent inflation, or we have even, you know, deflation. But uh, you know, the people uh, which are which have to spend, you know, the money they they basically earn, they just realize uh, they're getting less and less, and uh, and maybe you know this. Uh, Maybe the people, uh, when it goes uh, up to the hierarchy, which spend more time in this uh, government-controlled uh, educational system, I mean, some of them, they really came up with always the same, the yes, we needs to be independent, you know, the economy is much too complex, you are all stupid, you don't understand how it works. So they just believe what they learned uh, at, at the government-controlled uh, uh, schools, and they, you know, some of them, I mean, I had one conversation with a guy and he told me, he he was like, uh, you know, we have to support the export industry. And um, and then uh, he also realized that we, that we get poorer, uh, but he wants to keep up, you know, the export industry. So at the end of the day, even these guys, when they are completely against it, they realize uh, we are, yeah, we are going to be impoverished if we stay on the same track, but they never thought the whole thing through. You know what I mean? 
they have an answer, basically an indication, but they never think the whole the, the whole process uh, on, uh, on, until you know to the end. Well, you mentioned the elite propaganda against this referendum, trying to characterize the pro gold people as somehow right wing. But it sounds like what you're saying it's actually actually more of a top to bottom thing, where elites are against it, and there's a populist undercurrent that's for the referendum. I mean, it's really. You know, the distrust among centralized government uh, is growing. I mean, that's that's clearly visible. And uh, I think that also the first polls showed that. And when I when I saw these uh, discussions or you know, pro gold uh, articles or, uh, you know, which which you hardly find because they were really, uh, you know, oppressed in the, in the Swiss media. Um, but I, I found a lot of people, you know, even working in the banking system, uh, they were telling me, listen, don't tell anyone, but I, pro- I voted pro gold because, yeah, it's insane. You cannot fight uh, over in debt with piling even more debt. And they also understand that by printing money, uh, you don't increase your, your personal wealth. They, they understand that it's basically just, you know, uh, depreciating the currency and uh, reducing your, your purchasing power. Well, on that note, this referendum seems to be about more than just having the SNB hold more gold. It almost sounds like this is fundamentally a referendum about Swiss neutrality, about Swiss identity, about Swiss wealth, and about Swiss independence from the rest of Europe. Would you agree that there are that there's a bigger picture here? At the end of the day, you know, we should not, I mean, even if, of course, I mean, you know, we have literally, we basically took over the euro. So this means, you know, we are just right now, we, only fl- we, are, we are importing inflation and we basically, uh, you know, give a lot of wealth uh, of the Swiss people. We basically give it to the, to the Eurozone. So we are supporting, you know, the Eurozone by buying uh, those uh, debt papers. Um, but, you know, we still have the direct democracy in place. So I mean that's I mean they also there are some uh, stuff that they want to reduce you know how how easily it will be to place to hand in a referendum or initiative, uh, but you know we still have it. Uh, when it comes to the identity, yeah, I mean uh, it's it's the identity is basically you know that people need the Swiss people have to realize once more you know what is more important do we want to have a more centralized system or do we go back to the federalistic structures but I think this debate has been raised and you know we we really achieved it to have uh, uh, an active conversation among the Swiss people and we reached out to a lot of Swiss people and, uh, and they, we opened up their minds you know for to, to question the actual system and to question you know uh, is it good that we hand over more liberty and freedom to the centralized government or not and uh, of course, you know, I mean, independence means, uh, you know, when we are when we have a strong economy or we have a strong currency, and we are, um, we, you know, we are we are independent, uh, then basically, uh, yeah, the less influence uh, we see, you know, from the eurozone. And uh, as uh, up to today, I mean, still, you know, the majority of the Swiss people is against the euro uh, access or it, that we would join the European Union, and that hasn't changed at all. So, so really, right now, it's. It's more about using the debate to explain, you know, the people that there is also a different point of view when it comes to uh, an economical system and that they should, yeah, to reactivate all these uh, cultural genes uh, which are still, you know, within the Swiss people uh, in terms of, you know, the, the history we have these 800 years with uh, yeah, federalistic structures and that we don't trust, you know, centralized government and so on. So at the end of the day, nothing, you know, we are not lost, even if it's Switzerland will be still, you know, direct democracy. I think it will be still the last bastion of liberty. Uh, and I have seen, you know, that uh, even this SVP, uh, the, 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 the political party who brought up, you know, the gold initiative. I mean, they are coming with more initiatives in the future, which means, for example, Swiss law against international law. And, uh, you know, we have a gold franc uh, initiative, which is also coming in the future. So, I mean, they, they raised the right topics. And I think uh, now it's clear that we have to keep that discussion open and uh, because we have the better ideas or we have the better, you know, uh, ways how to, how to look at certain things, even at an economy. And it's time, you know, that we really spread, uh, you know, the principles of liberty as well as uh, what it does it means, sound money and, uh, and how an economy is working uh, that, you know, based on that the market is always stronger than governments. And uh, I think that's, that's what we now have to push forward. Claudio, it certainly is a debate that's taking place outside of Switzerland as well. We see the gold repatriation movement is growing. Uh, The Dutch Central Bank recently announced some repatriation of gold reserves from the U.S. 
Uh, the French central bank is now facing some political pressure from the right to do the same. And of course, we remember that the Bundesbank famously abandoned its effort to repatriate gold from the U.S. earlier this year. So this is a growing phenomenon. And I think central banks are going to have a hard time containing this. Claudio, thank you so much for your time and a fascinating interview. We will watch for election results Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend.